Listen, I'm glad there was no rain delay because the Phillies bats came alive in a big way. At least Bryce Harper did as we welcome you here to Phillies Post Game Live, brought to you by Curato Insurance, Amy Fiddle, Ricky Metallica, Ben Davis, and Ruben Amaro Jr. And gentlemen, I mean, Bryce Harper, we had mentioned he was over 11 with five strikeouts and two. I don't even, I feel silly even saying that. He had three home runs, including a grand slam tonight. And on the fifth day, Clark Kent turned into <laughs> Superman. That's exactly what it seemed like tonight because he didn't miss anything. He was, uh, he took his first swing of the game. He looked a little, little unbalanced. Mm. And then after that, it was like tee off time. I mean, he, uh, he hit the ball well. I mean, everything off the barrel. 97 miles an hour, he turns around into the center field stands. He got a slider in the, in the middle there, and he, and he hit it to right field. And then against the lefty, he gets a fastball down and in. What, what a night for Bryce Harper. I mean, you couldn't, it couldn't have come at a better time. You're sitting at 0 for 11. All of a sudden, you have three home runs in one game, six RBIs. Everything looks perfect. Now. Everything does look perfect. We're going to hear from Rob Thompson. We're going to check in with John Crook as well. But, Ben, when you think about it, I mean, there was a lot of good things about this game. Yes, I know Bryce Harper, the three home runs. But also, here's guys that were called up in spot starts like Ricardo Pinto and Spencer Turnbull. And they really, I thought, held their own. And then some, and then some. Uh, I, I, that's really an understatement in my in my perception, Amy. These guys were outstanding. Turnbull, the movement that he had, both laterally and and uh, with depth mm -hmm. as well, he was awesome tonight. Absolutely awesome with 83 pitches, 56 for strikes. And then what Pinto did coming in and, and giving them four innings. We heard T-Mac before the game saying, this guy's not available, mm -hmm. this guy's not available, this guy's not av available. And you're right, not even be on the team as of, except for a couple hours ago, he was outstanding and giving them the boost that they needed. And they got the win, meaning they have a chance to take the series, which is very important since they haven't won a series. Obviously, I know it's very early, but you want to try to get some momentum going your way, right? Yeah, an ugly night, but they played a good baseball. Yeah. And it's important to, for, for these guys to, to get W's. And this is a very good this is a very good hitting Cincinnati Reds ball club. And for uh, both Pinto and Turnbull to be able to throw the ball and throw strikes, that number zero walks. Zero mm. walks and uh, what's it? Eleven strikeouts. That is a huge number for these guys to come in in a very difficult situation when the Phillies just haven't been playing great baseball. And for those guys to sort of be the stoppers today, uh, that that's really great. And it's also a good sign for your overall depth of your pitching because uh, that that certainly will help once Taiwan Walker comes back. Absolutely. Saved the bullpen a little bit and got some uh, good innings from both of those guys. Let's check in across the way with John Cruck as we cross it over. And, John, I love that you gave uh, Bryce Harper a little grief about uh, – throwing it around the horn. He wondered if anybody saw that, which is great. The guy standing on third. But, you know, this was you know, not a great night weather-wise, but it was a good night, a feel-good night when you're seeing a guy that was 0 for 11 to hit three home runs, including a grand slam. I mean, he really seemed to see the ball very well. Yeah, you know, Amy, when, when Bryce is going good, he's keeping the ball in the center of the field like he did his first at bat that home run. And then if you're a little ahead, but as long as he stays on balance, he pulls he pulls a home run down a right field line, uh, that line drive, and then the, the the grand slam, of course, went to right center field. But uh, even the even the ball that Benson made a heck of a play on, uh, you know, he hit that ball really good too. So you have to be really really happy that uh, you know what we thought might be the end of Bryce Harper. I think he's he's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be fine the rest of the way but yeah that when he's going that way when he's hitting the ball to center left center field with authority and staying on balance you know he's seeing it well and when he's seeing it well uh you know there's some there's thunder in that bat john for as much as the uh phillies bullpen has been used here in the first four games how much of a blessing was ricardo pinto tonight well you know the rick the best thing about it was too the you, you know bryce said he got here in the fourth inning and in the sixth inning, he's in the dang game. But the great thing was is, is there was a little shaky there in the ninth inning, uh, but they didn't have to get anyone up else, to, no one else up in the bullpen to even throw. So the bullpen tomorrow, I would imagine, uh, except Ricardo Pinto, uh, they all should be available for tomorrow at 4 o'clock. So uh, that that was huge, though. To, to, but – in order for a reliever like that to pitch four innings, the offense has to do something special, and Bryce Harper made sure of that uh, with his six RBIs. 
Johnny, to be as, as sharp as Turnbull was tonight in those sloppy conditions, 46 and spit and rain, I mean, he was really sharp. The stuff alone, I know the numbers you know, say that he was outstanding, and he was, but the stuff, I mean, it was sharp, it was late breaking, and he had some giddy up on that fastball. Yeah, it, 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 you know, it, he's not throwing 100, but it just seems like the ball, it was such an easy, free and easy, and the ball just jumped on the hitters. But, yeah, you know, he pitched with it. The hardest thing he had to do all day today, it seemed like, was trying to get his wedding ring off in between innings <laughs> when the umpire told him he had to take it off. He was struggling with that, but true. everything else was, was free and easy with him. And, you know, look, you have to be really, uh, you know, really happy going forward with, uh, you know, until Taiwan comes back, knowing that uh, Spencer Turnbull, you know, if he pitches like this and keeps you in the game, you know, there's always, a, there's, you know, that, what more can you ask from your number five guy? John, anytime uh, a guy hits three home runs, they, he's going to be overshadowed. But uh, Brand, talk about Brandon Marsh and how he's swinging the bat and the fact that he can drive the ball the opposite way with some thunder. Yeah, you know, I, most people, it seems like like when they slice a ball like that, it's like, you know, it might be a, at best a double down the line, more than likely just a single. I, I, I mean, the bat. The ball jumps off his bat, though. I mean, he has, I mean, the home run he hit off Spencer Strider was to left field in, into the wind. He hit it into the wind. So he has some unbelievable pop that way. And I remember when we first got him, and I called Mark Gubas, uh, who announced for the Angels, and I said, what are we getting with this guy? And he said, he said, a, a, a really, really good defender, and he will hit. I know he hasn't proven it yet, but he will hit. And you know, you know, Gooby's from Philly, so you got to believe what he says, and he's right. <laughs> old you know, teammate I of think, mine. Well, oh gosh, yeah, you're old too. Yeah, but too. he's a pen charter but, uh, guy, John. You got to be careful. <laughs> he's what? <laughs> pen charter boy. Oh, I think I got that shirt on, Ben. Sorry. Uh, we're gonna see. We're I got like see. eight of them. I got like eight or nine yeah. of them. I'm freezing up here. It's cold. But no, but but you know, he you know he stays on the ball well against lefties. Look. You know, lefty, lefty, you're going to get fooled every once in a while. It's gonna not, not going to look good. Everyone has. But, you know, he stays on lefties well. And, uh, you know, if if something happens that he has to throw out there, the, the, you know, he has to go out there every day and play, I don't think you're going to miss anything with him playing against lefties or righties. I, I love it. And I, I'm really happy that, uh, you know, whether he's playing left field, center field, he just does what, what they ask him to do, and that's, uh, you know, play baseball and play baseball the right way. He does that, and now you see he's got some pop, too. Yes, he does. It was a good game all around, and we're going to see, as John mentioned, see everybody tomorrow, 3.30, 4 o'clock. You're going to try to show us? going to try to show us the shirt. Well, I got to. I can't get these dang gloves off. They're not oven mitts. Let's see what we got. Well, I got the Phillies announcer shirt, but. There it is. Uh, Pin chart. That a baby. Now that we're good. talking. That looks good. That's what I'm talking about. That looks good. I, I, have to be, I have to be excused. All right, Johnny. Perfect. Thanks so much for joining no, I, us. I'll wear the other one tomorrow, Ben. Thank you, there Johnny. There you go. Equal you representation <laughs> for all the schools there. Uh, John Crook, as always, we appreciate him. Would you say last Wait, night he was getting list. closer? Oh, I mean, yeah. he hit that missile back at the pitcher last oh, yeah. night. All right. And so, I mean, he was starting to get on the ball, and then tonight it was just. This is Phillies with three home runs in one game. Bamboo Brad. I remember that game like it was yesterday. That's an amazing <laughs> set right there. Who? That's a trivia question. Remember Bamboo Brad, Brad Miller? Uh, so, Jason Worth, obviously 2008, great season. Three. You can see this. This is all, these are all since uh, 1990. Ryan, Ryan had a pretty good season. Yeah, Howard yeah, had a pretty, pretty good, good season. 2006, <laughs> pretty good season. And now we see uh, your old buddy, Mike Lieberthal, Bobby Estrella, and then Benito Santiago. But Bamboo Brad and Jason Worth at the top of that list with a uh, with Bryce Harper. Bamboo, he had the three hats on. He couldn't. He yeah, just we kept putting, them on, about putting the them on, putting them on. No more gimmicks this year. No. They, they don't have any gimmicks. Thank you. I love it. Um, we know uh, you guys heard John Crux say it, but the game time has been changed tomorrow. It is no longer at 1 o'clock. It's at 4 o'clock. There is rain expected in the forecast once again. They were able to get what it in What time do we open, Amy? We open at 3.30, uh, of course, the 30 minutes before we raise our pregame show. So make sure you tune in at 3.30 to see these gentlemen right here. But it'll be interesting because, you know, there's rain all day. So hopefully they can get this one in like they did uh, tonight. Let's check in now with Rob Thompson. Yeah, and just the way it worked out, it was exactly what we needed, you know. Turnbull gives us five, and Pinto gives us four, and we score some runs. Harper, big night. Marsh had a big night. Uh, just good all-around win. Pinto didn't get near until the fourth inning. Yeah, he got stuck in traffic. So we, 
uh, you sent them out, I think it was about noon from Rochester in a car because we couldn't get a, a plane and then he got caught in traffic. So, yeah. Yeah. So, that's a baseball player. It's like American Legion. Yeah, he came in. And, yeah. But he, I think he threw like in the tunnel or something like that or in the cages. And then came out and said hello, and then headed down to the bullpen. Did you expect for him to pitch that much, or just kind of play out? Well, I was hoping. I mean, he's been stretched out. Um, I think he's been stretched out to four innings, probably 70, 65, 70 pitches. So, um, you know, he was getting close to his pitch limit, but he did a great job. He's got about five or six different pitches, and but splits really good. And Turnbull was really good. You know, he worked some deep counts in the first inning. Um, got his pitch count up a little bit, but he really settled in, got some quick outs, attacked the zone, strikes for the most part all night. So really, really a great debut. Were you a little nervous going into the game considering, you know, you had Turnbull starting and your bullpen didn't really look like there was too much available? Yeah, because uh, Spencer's not, he's not stretched out to the max pitch count, and, and we had, a lot of guys down today, so and we really didn't want to use any of our bullpen really. So the the, the scenario just was perfect for us. Bryce wasn't too happy with his uh, swing at the end of camp, and then he starts over eleven. Wondering what you kind of saw from those first two or three games, then leading into tonight. Yeah, you know, I said last night it was it was timing, but the swings the swing. Uh, path he seems like he's on the baseball up and even up the past few games so it's just a matter of time for him he's a great hitter and and you know i he i don't really get concerned with bryce what's it like to just see him do something like that he hasn't done this since he's been that's what the great players do you know they have big nights like that and um we needed it that grand slam just sort of Everybody could exhale a little bit, and that was huge. How was Stubbs feeling? Pardon? How was Gary Stubbs feeling? Uh, okay, he's he's a tough guy. You know, he's not real big in stature, but he's a tough, tough guy, and uh, he got it out there. Do you sense maybe when Bryce comes up with the bases loaded there that? Say, it when Bryce comes up with the, the bases loaded there, yeah, I mean, hit a third one. Do you sense that at all, or no? Like, with what he's done in the past and what we've seen here, yeah, I mean, it goes through your mind for sure. You've said a few times here that I've mentioned about like timing for Bryce, and it was just what you guys needed tonight. How do you balance the messaging of like wanting that fast start with knowing it's a long season, knowing timing is necessary for these things? Yeah, it's. You know, you have to balance it, and and um, you can't get, you can't lose your mind over losing a couple of games, not playing well early. You get, you got to just keep, stay with the process, and making sure that you're not panicking and making sure you're not putting people in, in in spots where they're, you know, they're going to get hurt or overplaying them, and and um, you know, we're just going to continue with the process. Yeah, I think I think he had it before. Um, I'm not really sure. He got to camp late, um, but I know that the first day that we got him, we're talking with him that he, you know, he had five or six different pitches and he could and throw them for strikes. I mean, he did a great job. Yeah, you know, and, and the the ability to throw strikes and you know, he hasn't last time he pitched here was six years ago and. To come in here and do what he did and throw strikes and and uh, keep us in the ball game and then we and we got some separation and, and just keep pitching that was I mean huge for us. It's a 91, 92 mile an hour pitch that seems to jump when it gets near home plate and it didn't seem like the hitters were timing him at all. Although 
could have had a little something to do that it, that his off-speed stuff was really good, too. I know in here in Philadelphia, we didn't hear much about Turnbull, what mm -hmm. he was about. He's been around for quite some time. He's, he's a veteran, 31 years old. He's bounced around, has had some injury issues. But he looked like a pitcher who knew exactly what mm -hmm. he wanted to do. Now, he was struggling with scattering the ball around a little bit early, as uh, Rob Thompson alluded to. But he righted the ship, and he didn't panic. Um, and that's what you get out of those uh, those veteran guys. And, and uh, it's just a great signing to create some depth for this club. And uh, hopefully he can continue to help them in some way, shape, or form later on this year. It was interesting. Topper said that he wasn't even stretched out yet. And you saw him, I thought, pitch very well, um, especially what they needed from him. Let's check in with a guy that they really needed, and that was Bryce Harper, three for four with three home runs. Good way to get it going. How did it feel for you out there tonight? Yeah, it felt great. Um, you know, I thought, uh, obviously, personal note, you know, it felt good um, going up there and hitting three homers really cool. Um, but obviously, I thought Spence threw the ball really, really well. Um, Ricardo got here, what, in the fourth inning and, you know, did what he did tonight. So um, just really good uh, pitching side and defense, everything. So I thought, uh, thought really good win. How incredible of a story was what Pinto did tonight. He started in Rochester today and didn't get here till the fourth inning. Yeah, no, it's. Well, he started the game in Rochester? Or he started the game. Oh, I was like, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, yeah, I mean, obviously him coming in and doing that for us. Um, I thought he threw the ball really well, kept it down. The split finger looked good. Um, just, you know, really good all around by him. You're somebody who appreciates, like, baseball history and just milestones and achievements. Can you kind of appreciate three home runs on a night like tonight, including a grand slam? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, didn't really shoot, you know, wasn't really sure if we were going to play this game tonight, obviously. And um, anytime you're going out there playing in that cold weather, um, it's, it's not very fun. Um, but getting the first one out of the way and kind of getting those runs on the board um, was really big for us. And I thought uh, collectively we had pretty good at bats against Ashcraft. And then Suter came in, and uh, Suter's usually, you know, he has my number usually. Um, so having a good at bat right there and, and you know, getting one to, to swing at. Um, you know, pretty good swing right there. How hard is it to hit in weather like this? How miserable were you out there? Maybe it's a better question. Yeah, I mean, the way I could put it with you guys is, you know, golfing in that weather for you guys is probably not very fun, right? Um, so kind of the same thing for us going out there. It's, uh, you know, not not the greatest. Did you feel like your swing and your timing was close in the last few days? Or yeah, no, I've, I've actually felt really good. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, not the results you want, but thought I uh, thought I had some pretty good swings in the Atlanta series and, Pretty good swings yesterday as well, and um, just trying to build that up and, and keep this going. Do you remember your other swing home again? Uh, Tom Kohler. Yeah. Uh, All three, I think. I think in June, maybe? Or no, May 7th. Yeah, May 7th. <laughs> yeah. Left field, right field, right field? Yeah. I think I went into the bullpen over each row's head. <laughs> what are you gonna remember Any about this detail? game? What are you gonna remember about this game in twenty years? Do you think? Hopefully, this is the start of us winning one. You know, be cool. Yeah. You look pretty upset on the ball to center field that was actually caught. But yeah, I mean, I, I, no, I was yeah. talking to Larry and the guys upstairs. It's you know, you have two, you want three, you get three, you want four, right? Like, I mean, that's just that's the mindset. So. Um, Obviously, you know, when you go out there and play the game, it's I don't, I'm not satisfied with one or two or three or whatever. I, you guys know how I am. I mean, I, I want to go out there and I expect myself to, to do that every night. Like, it's just um, what I expect out of myself, and I know my teammates do as well, and this fan base and everybody else. So, um, you know, definitely happy, you know, the way the, the night went, but just want to keep going, turn the pitch. So, when you hit two there and then that, that, that ball to center field gets caught, when you're coming up with the bases loaded, are you? And even though you said Suter's kind of had your number in the past, are you thinking, like, if I'm going to get one off him, this is the day type of feeling maybe? Or Yeah, I mean, once, you, once I got to 3-2, um, just trying to put a good swing on the ball, um, I, I wasn't really thinking Homer against him just because he, he has had my number. Um, just trying to get a hit right there and understand the situation. Obviously really cool to, to go deep right there. Um, but just trying to, that stepping stone of good at bat, good at bat, good at bat. Even if I punch out right there 3 2, um, I still felt like it was a pretty good at bat. Saw some good pitches and didn't chase much. So, um, you know, obviously put it into the seats, but um, just I want to continue to have good at bats. Do you retire the bat now? No, I'll, I'll use it. You will? Oh, yeah. 
to wear yeah. ski masks again tomorrow? What? You don't have to wear, like, ski I think masks. we all will, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean. We saw what happened to that bullpen in the first four games of the season. This guy comes in here out of nowhere, virtually out of nowhere, yeah. comes in, shows up in the game, and pitches four strong innings. You can't ask for anything better than that. Just think about giving him the, those four innings, giving this ball club four innings, mm -hmm. and then they have one game tomorrow, and then another off day on Thursday. That's granted that they get the game in tomorrow. But, I mean, that's, that's huge for a bullpen. Yeah. That is huge. And to be able to save those guys early on because they've been used so much early on in the season, uh, this, is, this was a big lift for this ball club. Ruben, you knew it. You signed him in 2011. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, he, had, he had a little bit of a, uh, a, a road yeah. to, to get back here to Philadelphia, and it's great for him to be back. Um, and, and it's a great debut for him, or re-debut, to come back and just help this ball club. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, again, that's a nice job by the, you know, pro scouting department of being able to add some pieces that they can, that they can bring in here to help this club. You cannot go through this season with 13 pitchers. It's not happening. It's going to take probably 20, 25, maybe 35 pitchers. And so he's one of those guys who's, who certainly helped them out and, uh, and save the bullpen, as these as these guys said. And uh, I mean, it's great, great for him. And there's a lot of guys in that uh, in that uh, clubhouse who are excited about having him back too. And I will say this much: being a former bullpen guy, you're praising him tonight in right, that clubhouse. Right, exactly. I'm Eat telling all those you, innings. He's the most popular guy in that in that in that clubhouse tonight. <laughs> he arrived in the no fourth doubt. inning, and he needed four innings to do the work. It was. Uh, what a crazy story, but I love it, and that's one of the great things about baseball. I think, have you ever seen anything like that? No, it's a pretty good story, though. I think it's pretty cool that, I, I mean, no, I haven't seen anything Right, driving like down from Rochester, been, arrives mid-game? I've been on planes before that didn't make it to the city, and we showed up at the game late. Yeah, not, a, not a player cruising it. up, and all of a sudden, yeah, we need you. Let's get, go, go on and get it. You just got here in the fourth, and now we're going to need you. I thought it was cool what okay. Topper said, because that's like Legion Ball stuff. It was. It's definitely <laughs> it's American Legion about vibe. It is. American Legion vibe. <laughs> uh, we do want to remind you that tomorrow's game, which would be the series finale that was scheduled for 1 o'clock, it is now scheduled for 4 o'clock. We open, Ricky, at 3.30. We open of at 3.30, Michael 330 Barkan. is our pregame show. Michael Barkan will be back. Michael Barkan uh, not here tonight because he's inducted into the East Brunswick High School Hall of Fame, so congratulations to Michael on that. 